Chapter 13 The goblin airship floated along the hall clouds, now surprisingly silent as it neared its destination. At the bow of the vessel, Ronan kept a watchful eye on the two figures guiding him toward his destiny. The goblins darted back and forth, adjusting gauges and muttering among themselves. How such a mad race could have created this wonder had been beyond him. Each moment the airship seemed destined to destroy itself, yet the goblins ever managed to right matters. Deathwing had not spoken to Ronan since telling him to board. Knowing that the dragon could have made him do whatever he so desired or not, the wizard had reluctantly obeyed. Climbing up into the airship and trying not to think what would happen if it all came tumbling down. The goblins were void and nullin. They had built this vessel themselves. They were great inventors, so they said, and had offered their services to the wondrous Deathwing. Of course, they had said the last with just a hint of sarcasm in their tones. Sarcasm and fear. Where are you taking me? he asked. The question had caused his two pilots to eye him as if he had lost all sense. To Grimbatal, of course, spouted one, who seemed to have twice the teeth of any goblin Ronan had ever had the misfortune to come across. To Grimbatal. The wizard had known that, of course, but he had wanted to the exact location where they intended to drop him. Ronda did not at all trust the pair not to leave him in the middle of an orc encampment. Unfortunately, before Ronan could ask, Void and his partner had been forced to respond to an emergency. In this case, a spout of steam erupting from the main tank. The goblin's airship utilized both oil and water in order to run, and if some component involving one was not breaking down at a critical moment, then something involving the other was. It had been for a fairly sleepless night, even for one such as Ronan. The clouds through which they flew had grown so thick that it felt as if the mage journeyed through a dense fog. He had not known what an altitude he sailed. Ronan might have imagined that this vessel transversed the sky, but rather than the open sea. In truth, both journeys had much in common, including the danger of crashing on the rocks. More than once, Ronan watched as the mountains had suddenly materialized on either side of the tiny ship, a few coming perilously close. Yet while he had prepared for the worst, the goblins had kept on with their tinkering, and even occasionally napping, without so much as a glimpse at the near disasters around them. Daylight had long come, but the deeply overcast weather kept it nearly as dark as late dusk. Void seemed to be using some sort of magnetic compass to guide them, but the one time Ronan had studied it, he had noticed that it had a tendency to shift without warning. In the end, the wizard had concluded that the goblins flew by sheer luck more than any sense of direction. Early on, he had estimated the length of the trip, but for some reason, even though Ronan felt that they should have reached the fortress by now, his two companions kept assuring him that they still had quite some time left before arrival. Gradually, he became he came to the suspicion that the airship flew about in circles, either due to the faulty compass or some intention of the goblins' parts. Although he sought to remain focused on his quest, Ronan found Varisa slipping into his thoughts more and more. If she lived, if she followed him, he knew her well enough. The knowledge just made him as much as it pleased. He could, how could the elf, how could the elf possibly learn about the airship? She might end up wandering Cosmoden, or even worse, assume rightly, and head straight to Grimbatal. His hand tightened on the rail. No, he muttered to himself. No, she wouldn't do that. She can't. Dragon's ghost already haunted him, just as those of the men from previous mission did. Even Moloch stood with the dead, the wild dwarf glowing condemnation, 
One could already imagine Verisa and even Felsad joining their ranks. Empty eyes demanding how, demanding to know why the wizard lived after their sacrifices. It was a question Roy often asked himself. Human? He looked, at, looked up to see Nolan, the more squat of the pair, standing beyond the arm's length from him. What? Time to prepare to disembark, the goblin gave him a wide, cheerful smile. We're here. Rowan dredged himself up from his dark thoughts and peered into the mist. He saw nothing but more mist, even below. I don't see anything. Beyond Nolan, Void, also grinning merely, grinning merrily, took the rope ladder and tossed the unattached end over the side. The slapping rope against the hull represented the only sound the wizard heard. Clearly, the ladder had not touched the bottom anywhere. There it is. This is the place. Honest and truly, Master Wizard. Boy pointed toward the rail. Look for yourself. Ronan did, with care. It could not have struck him as unlikely that the goblins might use their combined strength to toss him over the side, despite Deathwing's desires. I see nothing. Nolan looked apologetic. It is the clouds, Master Wizard. They obscure things to your human eyes. We goblins have much sharper vision. Below us is a very soft, very safe ledge. Climb down the ladder and we'll drop you off. You'll see. The mage hesitated. He wanted nothing more than to be rid of the Zeppelin and its crew, but to simply take the goblin's word about whether any land actually lay close without warning. Rowan's left hand suddenly reached out, catching Nolan by surprise. The mage's finger closed around the goblin's throat, squeezing hard despite Rowan's attempt to pull back. A voice on his own, but exceedingly familiar, the human hissed. I gave the command that no tricks were to be played, no acts of treachery performed, Worm. Mercy, grand and glorious master, choked Nolan. Only a game, only a g He managed no more. Rowan's grip to tighten more. Forcing his gaze down as much as he could, the helpless wizard saw the black stone in the medallion, giving off a faint glow. Once more, Deathwing had used it to seize control of the human's ally. Game? Murmured Roman's lips. You like games? I have a game for you to play, Worm. With little effort, the human's arm shifted, dragging, struggling on toward the rail. Void let out a squeak and scurried back toward the engine. Ronan struggled against Deathwing's control, certain that the Black Leviathan intended to drop Nolan to his doom. While the wizard had no love for the goblin, neither did he want the creature's blood on his hands, even if the dragon presently made him use of them. Deathwing, he snapped, blatantly surprised that his lips weren't his words for a moment. Deathwing, don't do this. Would you rather they had led you into their little boy, human? Came back the voice and said, the drop would not have been the pleasant for one, for one who cannot fly. I'm not that much of a fool. I had no intention of climbing over that rail. Not on a goblin's word. You would have bothered saving me in the first place if you thought me that odd, added, added. True. And I'm not without any, without power of my own. Ronan raised his hand which Deathwing had not deemed necessary to use. Muttering a few words, the wizard produced a flame above his index finger, a flame which had been directed toward the panicked face of Nolan. There are other ways to teach goblin lessons and trust. Barely able to breathe and able to flee, Nolan's eyes widened, and the spiny creature tried to shake his head. Be good. Only meant disease. Never meant harm. Nolan could only manage a squeak. This flame I can make larger. The magical fire spouted twice its previous length. Even to burn a hole, even to, from below, may be set off flammable oil. No tricks, no t tricks, promise. You see, Crimson ch Chest Mage asked his unseen companion. No need to drop him over the side. Besides, he might want to make use of him again. In reply, Ronan possessed hand abruptly released its hold on Nolan, who had dropped to the deck with the thud. The goblin lay there for several seconds, trying desperately to gain his breath back. Your choice, wizard. The human exhaled, exhaled, then glancing at Void, 
who still co who still cowered by the engine, called out, Well, get us to the mountain. Boyd immediately obeyed, frantically turning levers and checking gauges. Nolan finally recovered enough to join his partner, the beaten goblin not once glancing back. Extinguishing the magical flame, Ronan peered over the rail again. Now, at last, he could make out some sort of formation, hopefully crags of Grand Batal. He assumed from Deathwing's earlier words and images that the dragon still wanted him set down directly on the peak, preferably somewhere near a gap leading inside. Surely the goblins knew this, and any other choice they made at this point would mean that they still had still not learned the folly of crossing either their distant master or the wizard. Ronan prayed that it would not be so. He doubted that Deathwing would n allow the goblins to escape punishment twice. They began to draw near to one pink in particular, one that Ronan had vague memories of, even though he had never been to Grimbatal before. With growing eagerness, he leaned forward for a better look. Surely this had been the mountain from the vision that Deathwing had forced upon him. He searched for telltale signs, a recognizable outcropping or a familiar crevice. There, the very narrow cave mouth from his dizzying journey of mind. Barely large enough for a man to stand in, provided he managed to terrifyingly climb up several hundred feet of sheer walk, rock. Yet, still, it would serve. Ronan could scarcely wait. More than happy to be rid of this mischievous goblins and their flying outrage, outrageous flying machine. The rope ladder still dangled freely, ready for his use. The weary mage waited while Void and his partner maneuvered their ship nearer and nearer. Whatever his previous thoughts about the Zeppelin, Ron had to admit that now the goblins controlled it with measure of accuracy he found admirable. The ladder clattered slightly against the rock wall, just to the left of the cave. Can you keep it steady here? He called to Nolan. A nod was all he received from the seer fearful pilot, but it satisfied Ronan. No more tricks. Even if they did not fear him, they certainly feared the long reach of Deathwing. Taking a breath, Ronan crawled over the side. The ladder wobbled dangerously, slapping him more than once against the mountain. Ignoring the shock of each stride, the wizard hurried best he could to the bottom rung. The slim ledge of the cave stood just a little bit under him, but although the goblins had Zeppelin positioned as precisely as they could, the high mountain winds kept twisting Ronan from safety. Three times he tried to get his footing, and three times the wind dragged him away, leaving his foot dangling hundreds of feet in the air. Worse, as the current grew stronger, the airship too began to shift, sometimes drawing a few critical inches. The voices of two goblins rose in frantic, although the actual words were lost to the struggling mage. He would have to risk jumping. With conditions as they were, casting a spell would be too chancy. Ronan would have to rely on physical skill alone, not his first choice. The airship veered without warning, slapping him hard against the rock. Ronan let out a gasp, barely managing to hold on. If he had not abandoned the ladder soon, the next collision might be just enough to stun him and cause a fatal loss of grip. Taking a deep breath, the battered wizard studied the distance between himself and the ledge. The ladder rocked to and fro, threatening again to toss him hard against the rock. Ronan waited until it brought him near the ledge, then threw himself toward the cave. With a painful grunt, he came down on the slim ledge. His feet momentarily slipped, one finding no purchase whatsoever. The wizard scrambled to pull himself forward finally making progress. When at last he felt secure enough, Ronan dropped through the ground, panting. It took him a few seconds to regain his breath, at which he pointed he rolled onto his back, at which point he rolled onto his back. Beyond, Void and Ellen had apparently just realized that they had finally rid themselves of their unwanted passenger. The goblin airship began to pull away, 
the rope ladder still dangling from the side. Ronan's hand suddenly shot up, his index finger pointing toward the vessel. He opened his mouth to scream, knowing what would happen. No! The same words he had spoken earlier to create the flickering flame over his hand now erupted from his mouth. This time, they were not spoken by the wizard himself. A stream of pure fire, greater than any horrified spellcaster had ever summoned, shot forward, directly toward the airship and the unsuspected goblins. The flames engulfed the zeppelin. Ronan heard screams. The airship exploded as its stockpile of oil ignited. As the few remaining fragments plunged from the sky, Ronan's arm dropped to his side. Drawing in what breath he had, the mage snaked, You shouldn't have done that. The winds will keep the explosion from being heard, replied the cold voice, and the pieces will fall to a deep valley Lily used. Besides, the orcs are used to goblins destroying themselves in the midst of their experiments. You need not fear discovery, my friend. Ronan had not been concerned about his own safety at the moment. Only the lives of the two goblins. Death in combat was one thing. Punishment, such as the black dragon had melted out to his two rebellious servants, was another. You would do yourself better to continue on to the cave, Deathwing continued. The elements outside are hardly fit for you. Not at all, Molly, mollified by the Lady Helen's attempt at concern. Ronan yet obeyed. He had no desire to be swept off the ledge by the ever-increasing winds. For better or worse, the dragon had brought him to the, this close to his goal, one that he could now admit to himself he had s suspected he might never reach on his own. Deep down, the wizard had believed all along he would perish, hopefully at least, after he had made his amends. Now, perhaps, he had a chance. At the moment, at that moment, a monstrous sound greeted Ronan. A sound recognizably instant. A dragon, of course. And one young and fit. Dragons and orcs. They awaited him in the depths of the mountain. Awaited the lone mage. Reminded him that he might yet die. Just as he originally imagined. The human was strong. Stronger than imagined. Clad once more in the guise of Lord Prestor, Deathwing considered the pawn he had chosen usurping the wizard that the Keltoran had sent on his absurdly impossible quest had seemed the simplest thing. He would turn their folly into victory, but his victory. This Ronin would do that for him, although not in the way the mortal expected. Yet the wizard showed much more defiance than Deathwing had assumed possible. Strong of will, this one. A good thing that he would perish in the course of matters. Such strong will will breed strong wizards like Nabeev. Only one name among humans had the Black Leviathan ever respected, and that had been Nabeev's. Mad as a goblin, not to mention as unpredictable as one. He had wielded power unbe unbelievable. Not even Deathwing would have faced him willingly. But Nabeev was dead, and the Ebony Leviathan believe that to be the case despite recent rumors of the contrary. No other wizard came anywhere near having the mad one's skills and never would if Deathwing had it his way. Yet if Ronan would not obey him blindly, as the monarchs of the Alliance did, he would obey out of the knowledge that the dragon watched his every move. The two inspid goblins had made for an object lesson. Perhaps they had only planned to put terror in the heart of their prisoner, but Deathwing had not had time for such foolishness. He had warned Quirrell to choose a pair who would fulfill their mission without any nonsense. When the chief goblin had completed his own task, Deathwing would speak to him about his choices. The black dragon was not at all pleased. You had better not fail, little toad, he hissed or your brethren on board the airship will have considered themselves fortunate compared to the fate I would deal you. He dropped all thought of the goblin. Lord Prester had an important meeting with King Tyrannus about the Princess Kalia. Clad in the finest suit to be found, 
among any nobles of the land, Daphne admired himself in the lengthy mirror in front of the corridor of his chateau. Yes, every inch of a future king. Had humans carried within them even a shred of the dignity and power he possessed, the dragon might have to spare them, might have thought to spare them. However, what stared back at him represented to Daphne the perfection that the mortals could never even hope to attain. He did them a favor by ending their miserable existences. Soon, he whispered and promised to himself. Soon. His carriage took him directly to the palace, where the guards salted, where the guards saluted and immediately bid him enter. A servant met Deathwing inside the front hall, begging his pardon for the king not being there personally to greet him. Now fully into his role as a young noble who saw only peace between parties, the dragon pretended no annoyance, smiling as he asked the human to lead him to where Tyrannus desired him to wait. He had expected the king not to be ready for him, especially if Tyrannus still had to explain to his young daughter her chosen future. With all opposition to his ascension swept aside, and the throne only days from his grasp, Deathwing hit upon what he felt the perfect addition to his plans. How much better to strengthen his hold than to wed the daughter of one of the most powerful kingdoms in the alliance. Of course, not at all. Kiki, stop. Come here. Come here. Come here. With all opposition to his ascension swept with all opposition to his ascension swept aside, and the throne only days from his grasp, Deathwing had hit upon what he felt the perfect addition to his plans. How much better to strengthen his hold than to wed the daughter of one of the most powerful kingdoms in the alliance? Of course, not all of the reigning monarchs had to be viable choices had had viable choices in fact at this moment in time only Tyrannus and Dalen Proudmore had daughters either single or beyond empathy Jaina Proudmore however was much too young and from what the dragon had so far researched possibly already too difficult to control or else he might have waited for her no, Tyrannus' daughter would do just fine. Calia still remained at least two years away from marriage, but two years hardly mattered to the ageless dragon. By that time, not only would the others of his kind be either under his domination or dead, but Deathwing would have maneuvered himself into a political position in which he could truly begin undermining the foundation of the alliance. What the brutish orcs had failed to do from without, he would do from within. The servant opened a door. If you'll wait within, my lord, I'm sure his majesty will be with you shortly. Thank you. Caught up in his reverie, Deathwing did not notice that he had two new companions awaiting him until just after the door had shut behind him. The cloak and hooded figures, but bowed their shadowed heads slightly in his direction. Our greetings, Lord Prestar, rumbled the bearded one. Deathwing fought back the frown, nearly descending upon his mouth. He had expected to confront the Curentor, but not in the palace of Tyrannus. The, in it, the enmity 
of the dragon had magically built upon the various rulers toward the wizards of Dalaran, should they prevent the latter from daring to visit. My greetings to you, sir and madam. The second mage, old for a female of the race, returned. We had hoped to meet you sooner than this, my lord. Your reputation has spread throughout the kingdoms of the Alliance, especially in Dalaran. The mage wielded by these wizards kept their features obscured for the most part. Although they had but a simple action, Deathwing could have pierced their veils. The dragon chose not to do so. He already knew this pair, albeit not be their na by their name. The bearded one had a familiar feel to his aura, and if Deathwing and the wizard had recently come into contact, the false noble suspected that this mage had been responsible for the, at least one of the last two major attempts to break through the protective spells around the chateau. Considering the potency of the spells, it surprised Deathwing a little bit, a little, that the man still lived, much less confronted him now. And the reputation of the Karen Tor is known as well, he replied, and becoming more known with each day. But not in the way we wish, I must say. She hinted of his handiwork. Deathwing found no threat there. By this time, they suspected him a rogue wizard. Powerful, but not nearly what the threat he truly presented. I expected to meet his majesty here alone, he said, turning the conversation to his advantage. Has Dalaran some business with Lordaeron? Dalaran seeks to keep abreast situations important to all kingdoms of the Alliance, the woman replied. Something a bit more difficult of late due to our not being notified of major summits between members. Deathwing calmly walked over to the side table, where Terranus always kept a few bottles of his best on hand for a waiting guest. Lordaeron wine represented in his mind the only worthwhile export in the kingdom offered. He poured a small amount in one of the jeweled goblets nearby. Yes, I spoke with his majesty, urging him to request you to join the deliberations over Alterat but he seemed adamant about leaving you out of them. We know the outcome regardless, huffed the bearded man. Congratulations are order for you, Lord Prestor. Not once had they offered their names, nor had he offered his. Yes, they truly kept an eye on him, as much as Deathwing allowed, that is. It came as a surprise to me, I must tell you. All I ever hoped was to keep the Alliance from falling under a part after Lord Paranold's unfortunate behavior. Yes, a terrible thing that. One would have never thought it of the man. One would have never thought it of the man. I knew him when he was younger, a bit timid, but didn't seem the traitorous type. The elder female suddenly spoke. Your former homeland is somewhere not too distant from Altrac, is it not, Lord Prestar? For the first time, Deathwing felt a twinge of annoyance. This game no longer pleased him. Did she know? Before he could answer, the, the grandly decorated door on the opposite side of entrance opened, and King Terranus, his mood clearly not at all pleasant, barged in. A blonde, cherubic boy, barely more than a toddler, followed behind him, clearly trying to get his father's attention. However, Terranus took one look at the the two shadowy wizards, and the frown on his face deepened further. He turned to the child. Run along back to your sister, Arthas, and try to calm her. I'll be with you as soon as I can, I promise. Arthas nodded, and with the curious glance at his father's visitors, headed back through the door. Terranus shut the door behind him, then instantly whirled on the mages. I thought I told you... I thought I told the major domo to inform you that I have no time for you today. If Dalaran had any claims or protests to make concerning my handling of Alliance members, they can send a formal writ through our ambassador there. Now good day. The pair seemed unmoved. Deathwing held back a triumphant smile. His hold on the king remained strong even when the dragon had to deal with other matters such as Ronan. Thinking of his newest pawn, Deathwing hoped the wizard would take Terranus's full dismissal to heart and leave. The sooner they were gone, the sooner he'd get back to checking on their younger counterpart. 
We'll be going, your majesty, rumbled the male spellcaster. But we've been empowered to tell you that the council hopes you'll see reason on this before long. Dalaran has always been a steadfast, loyal ally. When it chooses to be. Both mages ignored the monarch's harsh statement. Turning to Deathwing, the female said, Lord Prestor, it has been an honor to meet you face to face at last. I trust it will not be the final time. We shall see. She made no attempt to extend her hand, and he did not encourage it, so they had warned him that they would continue to watch him. No doubt, the Karen Tor believed this would make him more cautious, even uncertain, but the Black Dragon only found their threats laughable. Let them waste their time, crouching over skyrim spheres, or trying to convince the rules of alliance to see reason. All they would gain by their efforts would be to further en enmity the other humans, which would work just perfectly for Deathwing. Bowing, the two mages retreated from chamber. Out of respect for Deathwing, they did not vanish as he knew they could. Now they would wait until back in their own assembly, out of sight, untrusting eyes. Out of sight of untrusting eyes. Even now, the Karen Tor took care with appearances around others. Not that it would matter in the long run. When the wizard had at least gone, when the wizards had at least gone, King Terranus began speaking. My most humble apologies for that scene, Prestor. The very nerve of them. They barge into the palace as if Dalaran and not Lordaeron ruled here. This time they go too far. He froze in mid-sentence as Deathwing raised in hand toward him. After glancing at both doors in order to ensure himself that no one would come running in and find the king bewitched, the false noble stepped to a window overlooking the palace and the kingdom beyond. Deathwing waited patiently, watching the gates through which all visitors passed in and out of Terranus's royal residence. The two wizards stepped into sight, heading away. Their heads leaned toward one another as they engaged in urgent yet clearly private conversation with one another. The dragon touched the expensive glass plate of the window with his index finger, drawing two circles there, circles that glowed deep red. He muttered a single word. The glass on one of the circles shifted, puckered, shaped itself into a parody of a mouth. Nothing at all. He's blank, Madeira. Couldn't sense a thing about him. In the other circle, a second, somewhat more delicate mouth formed. Perhaps you're still not recovered enough, Drendon. After all, that shock you suffered. I'm over it. Talk more than... Take more... I'm over it. Take more than that to kill me. Besides, I know you were probing him too. Did you sense anything? A frown formed on the feminine mouth. No, which means he's very, very powerful. Possibly as powerful as Medivh. He must have been using some powerful talisman. No one's that powerful, not even Crossus. Medivh's tone changed. Do you really know how powerful Crossus is? He's older than the rest of us. That surely means something. It means he's cautious. But he is the best of us, even if he isn't the master of the council. That was his choice more than ours. Deathwing leaned forward, his, only mi his once mild curiosity now growing stronger. What's he doing anyway? Why is he keeping so secret? He says he says he wants to try to find out about Prestor's past, but I think there's more. There's always more with crosses. Well, I hope he finds out something soon because the situation is what is it? I feel a little tingling on my neck. I wonder if up in the palace the dragon quickly waved his hand across the glass mouse. The paint instantly flattened, leaving no trace. Deathwing backed away. The female had finally sensed his spell work, but she would not be able to trace it back to him. He did not fear. However, skilled for humans they were, but Deathwing had no desire at the moment to drag out his confrontation with the pair. A new element had been added to the game, one that, for the rest of the time, made the dragon just a little pensive. He turned back to Renus. The king stood still where Deathling had left him, mouth open, hand out. The dragon snapped his fingers. And I won't stand for it. I have a mind to cut off all diplomatic relations with this imme with them immediately. 
Who rules in Lordaeron? Not the Corintor. Whatever they may think. Yes, probably a wise move, your majesty. But draw it out. Let them lodge their protests. Let them begin closing the gates on them. Then begin closing the gates on them. I'm very certain that the other kingdoms will follow. Trannis gave him a weary smile. You're a very patient young man, Prestor. Here, I've been ranting. I've been ranting, and you simply stand there, accepting it all. We're supposed to be discussing a future marriage. True, we have more than two years before it can take place, but the withdrawal will require extensive planning. He shrugged. Such is the way of royalty. Deathwing gave him a slight bow. I understand completely, your majesty. The king of Lordaeron began telling him about the various functions of his future son-in-law would need to attend over the next several months. In addition, taking care of Alterac, young Prestor would have to be present for each occasion in order to strengthen the ties between him and Kalia in the eyes of the people and of his fellow monarchs. The world would need to see that this match would be the beginning of a great future for the Alliance. And once we take Cosmodon and Grimbatal back from those infernal hordes, we can begin plans for a ceremonial return to the lands to the hill dwarfs. A ceremony you shall lead, my dear boy, as you are possibly one of those most responsible for holding this alliance together long enough for victory. Deathling's attention slipped further and further away from the babblings of Tyrannus. He knew most of what the old man would say, having placed it into the human's mind earlier. Lord Prestor, the hero, imagined or otherwise, would reap his rewards and slowly, methodically, begin the destruction of the lesser races. However, what interested the dragon more at that moment was the conversation between the two wizards and especially their mention of another Karen Tor, one Crassus. Deathwing found of him interest. He knew that there had been earlier attempts to circumnavigate the spells surrounding the chateau, and that one of those attempts had triggered the endless hunger, one of the oldest and most thorough traps ever devised by a wielder of magic. The dragon also knew that the hunger had failed its function. Crassus. Was this the name of the wizard who had evaded the spell as ancient as Deathwing himself? I may have to learn more about you, the dragon thought, as he absently nodded in response to Tyrannus's babble. Yes, I may have to learn more.